And as we open up our program, our first speaker is going to be the Honorable Mayor Jackson of Montclair. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for attending this uh, wonderful event. Um, we here in the township of Montclair really pride ourselves on being very green and very friendly. Uh, we have Gray Russell back there, who's our uh, coordinator. The Gray, let's give it up for Gray. We're, I think we're one of the few towns uh, in New Jersey that actually has someone dedicated full time to uh, working with environmental issues and causes. And Gray is the best of the best. So thanks, Gray. Appreciate you. Um, I want to thank Jose and the entire team for pulling this all together. Uh, this is the place that this conference should be, uh, we feel. Uh, I'm, I'm partial, but that's just the way it is. Um, uh, as a leading community, again, on environmental concerns and issues, um, uh, we feel very honored and proud that the organization has decided to uh, have this conference here today. Um, I'm hoping that everyone will learn something um, and will be able to uh, take something back to your respective communities um, and sharing among each other. Uh, we've got a long way to go. I mean, we read, the, we read papers, we watch the news every day, we live every day and we see plastic bottles, we see, uh, we see the carbon emissions, we, we, we read about how fossil fuels are being used uh, irresponsibly throughout uh, of the world and our country. And we've got to be able to uh, get a handle on it and get a grip on it. And uh, you're the leaders. Um, I think it's going to be a grassroots effort to get this done. And we're starting here. And this is a perfect example of it. So again, I want to thank you all for coming um, and being leaders uh, in your own right and making this a, a safer, uh, more pleasant, more environmental mentally friendly, more green world. Uh, so again, thank you to all of you for pulling this together. Have a great conference. I'm actually going to be leaving for a bit. Um, uh, I have to do a stress test. That's part of my job as mayor. I'm gonna, <laughs> so I, I've got a stress test that I've been wait, waiting on to get done. So I'm going to run and do that. Um, and I hopefully we'll get back. Um, but I also too, um, Jose, I wanted to give, um, uh, just as a token, I wanted to give uh, to our speakers uh, some um, um, pins that represent uh, Montclair celebrated its 150th anniversary uh, last year and I wanted to uh, leave some pins for our guest speakers uh, to present them when they uh, oh, thank come. you very thank much you. appreciate it thank you so thank you everybody have a great thank conference you. I think I have one more yeah. <laughs> Here you go. thank you thank you Thank you, Mayor Jackson, for opening us up. And ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big round of applause for the gentleman that has made this all possible for five years. Him and all of his friends give it up for Jose German, the founder of the NEEC. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to see the fifth um, Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference happening today. It's bigger and bigger and networking with so many organizations. We have representation here for more than 60 environmental and community organizations in New Jersey. And officially, the Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference is the largest gathering of environmentalists in New Jersey, and one of the biggest in the New York metro area. Today we have a very beautiful program, uh, but let's start with a little bit introduction about who we are and the things that we do. Northeast Earth Coalition mission. We work at the community level to protect the environment, promote sustainability and food security, and support the work of local environmental activists. We believe a strong local food system contributes to the health of our, of our entire community, and we work to facilitate greater understanding of the social, economic, and environmental impacts of our food choices. We support small family farms, urban farming projects, community vegetable gardens, and backyard food production. We believe in promoting and a healthy society through education about and appreciation of local, fresh, sustainably raised produce and products. We promote energy conservation and the integration of renewable, sustainable energy. We envision a region where people can coexist and prosper in harmony with their environment. To this end, we promote the preservation and restoration of the natural environment. Thank you, board members. <laughs> let's, 
talk briefly about our environmental uh, initiative uh, program. We offer training to educate the public about environmental issues. Also, we sustain and promote environmental restoration uh, to create you know, different level of educational project in town, like the Crane Park demonstration garden. We can see this before and after. This is a pollinator uh, wildlife habitat uh, uh, educational garden. Um, we installed there an interactive sign, uh, which is connected to a lot of information, not only about uh, the history of the community, but at the same time, includes profile for all the plants and insects uh, and butterflies here coming to the yard, to the garden. This project is already uh, our official project for the pollination project, the National Wildlife Federation, the Cersei Society, the Monarch Watch and Rockers uh, Stewardship Program. The Urban Growers Program, a seed community vegetable, was an effective strategy to reduce the effect of uh, people who are facing food insecurity. Uh, we have nine community gardens in our programs. Five of them are managed directly for the Northeast Earth Coalition, the others are associated. And we started right here in Montclair, and now we are in Torowa with the Sprouting Total Sprouting, Sprouting Totowa Community Garden. We have another two gardens in Patterson, the veterans, the for disabled veterans uh, community gardens. Uh, we have the Green Acres. Uh, we also have another in Passe. We are supporting another uh, community garden in East Orange. Uh, we are the supporter of the Montclair State University uh, Community Garden too. Um, and then we have First Congregational Church in South Fullerton. Another community garden is coming to Montclair uh, in Pine Street. Um, and then uh, we have Crane Park Demonstration Garden. All of them are producing food to support local food programs in all around Northern Jersey. And here is Mr. David. Uh, in this garden, 35 families are receiving the benefit of the community garden. The first congregational church, which is a demonstration uh, low scale garden, but very effective. And this is the, the Passe Women's Center, where we have 14 immigrants women doing far, urban farming and learning uh, about the American culture and English as a second language. And the Montclair State University garden, led by Chris Snyder. The Organic Village of the Veteran Garden, which is, you know, uh, very uh, significant and meaningful because it's a therapy for PTSD for the veterans, and they are doing great job there, to the point that two years ago, they have a surplus uh, in the garden and was donated to Tony's Kitchen in Montclair. The String Restoration Project is one of our environmental projects in Brookdale Park. This is a Rocker Environmental Steward project co-sponsored by Brookdale Park Conservancy and the coalition. And new projects beginning for next year are, as I mentioned before, the Mount Carmel Church to support a shelter for refugees and local food pantry programs, and a pollinator corridor on Glenridge Avenue. This is a community effort co-sponsored by the Montclair Bid in partnership with home owners, business, business and, and a church. And let's say at this moment, thank you to Montclair Bit for supporting this project. Jason Gleason is here. So. <laughs> a project that we supported in Pine Street and we are missing a lot. Uh, 73 C Gallery Community Garden is gone, unfortunately. Uh, we hope that that never happen again in our community. And that is why we are replacing that corner uh, of, you know, of meeting and, and community with another community garden in the same street. Um, the East Orange Community Garden led by Mark Cheetah in, uh, in, East, in East Orange. The Sprouting Torwa, and we have here April Colbo, which is tabling in the corner around. She's now an entrepreneur also. Let's support her and her efforts. Thank you. The community outreach program connects with environmental activists and community groups and build partnership with other organizations 
to support the mission of community groups and environmental organization. And collaboration is the things that we basically do, like today. The 2019 Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference, the Earth Day celebration, the butterfly release at Crane Park, which is a huge, very popular event every year happening. Kids love it. We take advantage of our opportunity to teach others. We share the knowledge with people who are you know, new to the, to the movement. And we enjoy so much doing the things that we are doing and share the joyful accomplishment with others uh, in the community. We motivate volunteers and work hard to improve our communities. And we celebrate a well done job. Uh, and this is important. We are now concentrated in educating the next generation. Uh, the Montclair High School Skateboarding Club, they are right here in the corner. <laughs> they are skating, but at the same time, they are doing environmental work. The, uh, go back a little bit. Uh, in, the other, in the other picture, we have the Accessible Nature Project. We are bringing a school from Montclair, and every town interested is welcome to be part of the program. And we are teaching them in an open classroom at Crane Park the connection between pollinators, food, wildlife habitat, and all of that. So kids are coming every season to, to see something different. Eventually, those kids will be in middle school and eventually will be in high school. By the time that they are ending the program, they are already well-trained environmentalists. We grow, we harvest, and share the bounty to make food affordable and accessible for everyone, and that is in our hands. We have the capability to do it. Last year, we were supporting programs. We are a really a small organization, but we have more than 122 volunteers. And we raise money, and the money is going 100% back to the community that we support. It's a volunteer-driven organization. Nobody gets paid. But every penny that we are raising is going back to the community in different projects, micro grants and all of that. So I'm proud to say the last year, we invested in our community 23,159 of which 16,659 went directly to community gardens uh, program, and 6,500 went directly to environmental initiative. And when you see this amount, you say, well, that's a little money. No, it's not. When you have everybody volunteer, volunteer can do the amazing things with almost nothing. And you, most of you are volunteers, so you know the meaning of that. Yeah, and this year we are almost doubling the amount that we put last year out in the community. So you support matter. <laughs> Let's help together our community leaders to achieve their dreams. We had 24 community banks last year and a part new partnership. We grew more than 5,000 pounds of vegetable. We have 110 volunteers, and they donated more than 2,000 hours, equivalent to 110,000. And that is the impact that we are having in the, in the community. We had new collaboration with the New Jersey Native Plant Society for garden tours and workshops. We have a five years already collaboration with the Passe Women's Center Community Garden. We also have collaboration with Bike and Walk Montclair. They are right here in tabling. <laughs> we also have collaboration with Montclair Co-op School for classroom, uh, open classroom at Crane Park. We also have collaboration with the Montclair Skateboarding Club, cultivating the future environmentalists. And we also have co collaboration with Montclair Design Week. They are right there. <laughs> More collaboration. Brookdale Park Conservancy last year, they are brand new. They are co sponsor of Brookdale Park String Restoration Project, which is a beautiful project. And later on, probably we can talk about that. 
Uh, we also have collaboration with Rockin Environmental Stewardship Program. They are here tabling in somewhere. Amy, thank you for coming for all the work that you are doing. And we have many more projects working, you know, uh, to work with you and the Rocket Stewardship Program. Another collaboration, was I mentioned before, the Montclair Center bit will be sponsoring the Polinero uh, Corridor in, in Glen Ridge Avenue. This is a huge, uh, very important uh, project because almost it's a mile between the Bay Street Station and Bloomfield Avenue in Glen Ridge Avenue. And we are planting pollinators plants all along the, the, the avenue using private land, public land space, and business owner uh, 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 properties. And the second um, important um, alliance for last year is our Lady of Mount Carmel, and they are sponsoring a community garden with us for refugees uh, from uh, Mexico, Guatemala, and Central America. And thank you for all the wonderful support and for helping us to make the 2019 our best for best year. And I put that picture on purpose because this little kid that we see here with a red shirt is uh, Alan Berkowitz. And he was with us three years ago. Alan, could you please stand out here? Yeah, you were there. No. So, so it continues, you know, keeping the, the, the kids interested in becoming environmentally, environmentally conscious uh, citizen. And that is great to see them, you know, years later coming back. Thank you for all your work. Good morning and welcome. I'm really excited to be here um, to participate in the fifth annual Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference. I was also um, pleasured to be here last year and I'm a member of the Northeast Earth Coalition. So um, it's with great pleasure that my job today is to introduce uh, just one of the most incredible people that I've had the privilege of getting to know over the last few years. Um, uh, our 11th Congressional District Congresswoman, Mikey Sherrill, is here with us today. And this amazing person on very, very, very short notice accepted our invitation to come here um, specifically just to share with you. So um, I guess about a week ago with her very, very busy schedule when we saw that she became the chair of the environmental subcommittee for science, space and technology for the Congress, we reached out to her. And when we reached out to her, we thought, well, yeah, sure, right. You know, it's less than a week away and she's got a lot to do. But um, to our surprise and to our gratitude, she agreed to be here. She's here today. And um, just in terms of background, for those of you who don't know, she is a um, former Navy helicopter pilot. She's also a former prosecutor. And um, in 2019, when she was elected to represent the 11th Congressional District in Congress, she took Washington, D.C. by storm, and she has continued to do so. She manages to balance all of the job responsibilities that come with Congress. She manages to take time for hometown and to sit with us um, and address that and maintain um, a beautiful family as well here in Montclair. So I'd like to introduce um, Mike Shirell and just thank you so very much for, for being here. I know her as my friend over the last couple of years. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Well, 
ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't think Renee was dedicated to Montclair, you can hear uh, from her voice that she was not going to miss this no matter what. And thank you for everything you do for our town. I really appreciate it. Um, Thank you, too, to Jose German, to Mayor Jackson, who I saw earlier, uh, obviously Councilwoman Baskerville, and all of today's attendees. Thank you to the Northeast Earth Coalition for bringing us together for your fifth year and for your commitment to our environment. It's no surprise that you're on your fifth year because New Jerseyans know the importance of clean air, clean drinking water, and protecting our natural resources. We also understand very clearly that climate change poses a threat to our economy, our national security, and New Jersey's future, not to mention our children's future. The environment is actually a bipartisan issue in New Jersey. We live in the most densely populated state in the country. We have treasures like the Jersey Shore and the Highlands, as well as challenges like EPA Superfund sites and brownfields. One of the things I found so heartening as I've gone across the district is just how broad the consensus is that we can do more. So I'll just tell you a quick story. I was up in Harding. I don't know how many of you are familiar with the western part of my district. I was up in Harding, which is a very red part of my district. Um, and I was there for the swearing in. And one of the, the councilmen who had just um, been elected, got up and, and the mayor, the newly elected mayor said, um, would you like to speak? And he said, yeah. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, there's something I think I have to talk to you about tonight. Microplastics in our water supply. And I thought, wow, if we're talking about this in Harding, we are in a pretty good spot here in New Jersey to move forward. So during my first year, I've worked to embrace that mindset, looking for ways to grow our clean energy economy and help pass legislation to fulfill our role as effective stewards of our environment. Last year, I toured seven of our Superfund sites with the EPA Regional Administrator and the DEP Commissioner so I could be a better advocate for Superfunds in Congress. I then voted for a $55 million increase to the Superfund program. I also helped pass the Coastal Marine Economics Protection Act with bipartisan support to establish a permanent moratorium on oil and gas leasing along the Atlantic and the Pacific coasts. I proudly work for a permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund a program that has helped the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge, Camp Washington, and Foley Field Park, all right here in the 11th District, increase their conservation efforts. I've also met with our mayors who represent the communities along the shores of Lake Hapatcong to make sure local, state, and federal officials work together to protect the lake and counter harmful algal blooms or HABs. Lake Hapatcong is the largest lake in New Jersey, and the lake was closed for most of the summer this past summer, uh, impacting residents, businesses, and the economy of Northwest Jersey. So the state is putting together a package of grant funding and loans for local municipalities dealing with HABs, and just last week the Morris and Sussex freeholders announced they would partner with local municipalities to help provide the matching funds needed to qualify for these state grants. I've taken this fight to Washington, pushing for a $345 million increase to the Clean Water and Drinking Water State Revolving Funds. And my office is working with the Lake Hapatcong Foundation to ensure that projects from New Jersey were eligible under the requirements of an EPA grant for HAB mitigation demonstration projects originally intended for Florida and the Great Lakes. One more bill I want to mention, we passed the Bipartisan Arctic Cultural and Coastal Plain Protection Act to repeal a provision that opened up the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, many of you know it as ANWR, to oil and gas leasing developments. And believe me, even though ANWR is about as far as you can get in this country uh, from the 11th district, as many of you know, our residents care deeply about this. And in fact, I'll never forget the first question I got as a candidate when I was at a Fridays for Freelinghausen. Uh, Freelinghausen somebody said, what are you going to do to protect the ANWR? 
Well, I'm glad to have fulfilled the promise to protect the Anwar last year. In addition to this legislative agenda, I have the pri privilege of serving on the House Science, Space, and Technology Committee. Last year, I served a chairwoman of the Investigations and Oversight Subcommittee and held hearings on a range of topics, including preparing Americans, America's transportation infrastructure for climate change, scientific integrity at the EPA, lead in the drinking water in New Jersey, I held that hearing, it was a field hearing in Bloomfield, and how science should inform decision-making processes, even a hearing on social media disinformation and election security. So this year I was unanimously chosen to serve as chairwoman of the Subcommittee on the Environment. The Subcommittee oversees environmental, climate change, and weather research. In fact, we just passed a bill for about space weather, which I I'm not going to lie to you, I made a little fun of that bill, but it's a very important bill that I, uh, I had to tease one of my colleagues about our space weather bill. Um, but I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues on the committee to more directly support critical investments in research that will grow our clean energy economy and protect New Jersey's environment. One of the areas I'm most excited to work in is offshore wind. New Jersey has the best offshore wind conditions in the world. Our state has just signed off on the largest investment in offshore wind in the United States with the goal of increasing our target to 7.5 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2035. So many of you heard the governor promise to increase our, to get to a clean energy economy by 2050. And I've, I thought that was a good idea and said that we should do that. But that doesn't work if we don't set the milestones to reach it. We're not going to suddenly wake up um, on New Year's Day in 2050 and say, okay, today's the clean energy economy. We have to build towards that, and New Jersey is doing just that. That's enough po to power 3.2 million homes and meet 50% of our state's electrical needs. <laughs> we have to position ourselves as a leader in the clean energy economy, not just because we deeply believe that and think it's good for our children, but because that'll be good for our state and for our state economy. We can be a leader in clean energy innovation. Often when we talk about climate change, we focus on the big, bold ideas like constructing offshore wind turbines or installing blocks of new clean energy infrastructure and investing millions of dollars in accelerating the transition to a lower carbon economy. And these are essential components of addressing climate change and putting our nation on a path to building a cleaner, more sustainable future. But too many times people forget to talk about how we can also help mitigate the effects of climate change by directing resources to conserving our existing land and ecosystems. So that's why I love the fact that the theme of the conference this year is acting locally for a more sustainable world. There are so many ways we can work here in our communities to protect our environment and promote sustainability. sustainability. Community gardens are a perfect example. I know we have some urban growers here and active gardening groups throughout the district. Gardens reduce runoff, growing native plant species reduces harmful insects and pests, and it also reduces water consumption and fertilizer. Urban agriculture is another way to reduce runoff, protect the environment, generate revenue, and reduce the energy intensity of our food system, and they're great for our pollinators. So these seem like small-scale issues to some people, but they're incredibly important, and these are the kinds of local actions that can help us reorient policy to promote a more sustainable future. So the House is going to consider a major highway and infrastructure bill soon. And I'm proud to say that our Gateway Tunnel Project has been endorsed by the Sierra Club because it's so critical that we keep people taking public transportation and not move them back into cars, which is one of our largest carbon generators. And I love, I, I love bike and walk Montclair. Um, <laughs> Because we need to do more to protect safe streets and get people on bikes. And I'll tell you, we had the chairman of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee stand before the caucus and say, we've seen great gains even in a place like Michigan. And you would think, Michigan might not be the place I'd start for a biking economy. And they said, no, we get fat tires, we bike in the snow, everybody loves it. So I said, great. Um, and I mentioned pollinators a little bit ago. 
Because of the work of advocates like you, we're now thinking about how we can direct the U.S. Department of Transportation to work with states to grow pollinator-friendly species in highway medians and roadsides. And so to promote more native species, I'm a co-sponsor of a small bill we call the Botany Bill. Um, I admit, when I first decided to run for office, I never quite expected to be a champion of the importance of botanical sciences. But the federal government is the largest landowner in the country. Native plants are so critically important, and they're under stress right now, as many of you know firsthand. So we only have one botanist for every four million acres of federal land, and we're projected to lose nearly half our botanical expertise in the next decade. So yes, I'm part of a bipartisan group of lawmakers pushing for more federal investment in native plant species and botanical research. And I'm just going to leave you with this, because I think with many of the actions of our president, there are a lot of people that worry very deeply. I think we've seen some of the rollbacks in the EPA. I've seen it firsthand because I've held hearings, like I said, on scientific integrity. But I'll tell you, despite the fact that the president seems to be um, trying to have a very regressive view on climate change, you don't see that across the board in Congress, even um, from Republicans in Congress. I think you would be hard pressed to be a member of the Florida delegation and not engage in what needs to be done to address our climate issues. You'd be hard pressed to now be a member of the delegation from Texas and not be concerned about our climate change issues. So we are seeing um, a growing group in Congress accepting that we need to do more um, for climate change, we need to do more for an environment. And I do believe that New Jersey can be a leader in showing the rest of the nation how we move forward. And I think our investment in clean energy is a, such a critical investment for our state. And I'm looking forward to working with the governor to continue to see how I can support that as a member of Congress. So thank you all so much for having me. And uh, I'm just really glad you didn't want me later in the day, Renee. I have a School of Rock concert later today to attend for my son, Ike. So um, thank you again. Thank you. We are recognizing the work of many community activists, not only Montclair, but all around. So this year, we have three local community activists that has been selected to be recognized for the outstanding work that they are doing to benefit people facing food insecurity, supporting youth program, and celebrating a hundred years of service in this community. Let's start with the first person. The first award honoree this year is Dr. Gwen Amos Parkett. She has been an advocate for people suffering homeless and food insecurity. And her work also in several college campuses for a student facing food insecurity has been outstanding. We want to recognize her work, Lifetime Work for People in Need Award, presented to Dr. Gwen Amos Parker for extraordinary work for people in need. Fifth Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference, January 25th, 2020, Northeast Earth Coalition. Thank you so much for this honor. It is my pleasure to volunteer to serve the homeless and the food insecure in our town. And MESH does not do it alone. There's so many hands that work together who are concerned about the people who are not able to, who have housing or who are food insecure. So I thank you so much. And the second honorary is our board member, friends, and people, a, pe a person who is so much loved in this community, Greg Payson. <laughs> Greg has been active everywhere with Montclair Make Music, a skateboarding club, the community, the LGBTQ community. He has been an extraordinary life for the community. 
and everywhere, in every good cause, Greg Payson is behind. So we recognize you for your community activism with the award 2019 for your extraordinary community work, Faith Acting Locally for a More Sustainable World Conference, January 25th. See, if you volunteer for 40 organizations, you get an award too. Um, th a special thanks to Jose. Jose allows all these organizations to come in under this big umbrella. Everything from Montclair Fair Food Alliance, which works with the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, to Skateboard Club, to Terry Serendipity Cafe, and even anti-war movement and peace action, because you can't talk about climate change without talking about militarism. So thank you so much. And our last honorary has been an environmental pioneer for now 100 years. And they are celebrating the 100th anniversary. The Montclair Bird Club. Tracking migration for over 100 years, counting birds passing through Montclair, documenting everything about birds and migration, doing field trips all around. A hundred years, that is remarkable. So we need to recognize them because they have been pioneer, not only in Montclair, but in New Jersey. And this is a big thing. So we are very honored to recognize the Montclair Bird Club for the work that they have been doing. Well, let me start by saying thank you to everybody. And just to put some things in perspective, uh, if you look at our old documents, which you can on our website about the Bird Club, you'll find that all of your environmental efforts can actually be tested. We can see how well things work by looking at the patterns, looking at the bird populations, looking at the increases, the declines, mostly the declines. And you can get a very good picture of what's happening around the world and specifically in the United States. Uh, fortunately, not all of the bird populations are suffering, but quite a few are. I mean, we lose, we've lost, I think it's at this point, three billion birds a year, which, which tells you something. And as a bird watcher, that's concerning to me, but the reasons that the declines are there are probably more startling. If we go out bird watching now, not only do we see fewer birds, but we see the reason for fewer birds. And that's because almost all the insects are gone. And if we don't have the insects, we don't have pollination, we don't have food for the other animals, and the decline is precipitous. I, I don't know what it takes to make things better. I do know that your efforts are things that have always impressed me. Uh, about 15, 20 years ago, I was asked by a very kind woman to be part of an organization which was called Artists End Hunger. And I learned that it's one thing to go out and grow the food, it's another thing to support the people that do that. And it's also important to support the people that are hungry. Bertrand Russell at one point asked the question, at what point do people give up on democracy? How hungry do they have to be before they don't give a damn about voting? And, and I think we're seeing that right now in many, many places. One of the other lessons I learned was it takes a lot of gumption, but when it gets to fundraising and making things happen, we've got to stop asking our friends. They have limited resources. We have to go to where the money is. We have to go to the corporations. We have to get the people in the corporations involved, and then the corporations follow. When we put together Artists End Hunger, we raised probably only maybe two or three million dollars. but. In the process, I remember that wonderful day when somebody came to me and said, we have a half a million dollars left over. Who do you want to give it to? And we did. We gave it away. There were three gentlemen in our organization that said, this isn't good enough. You are not going fast enough. So they broke off from us. We gave them a little funding. And you've probably heard about them. They put together Comic Relief. They raised a lot more than we ever did. But it's that effort and finding the people that are in the organizations that are willing to participate, and that gets the corporations to follow. Anyway, thank you very, very much. 
Yes, big round of applause for all of our award recipients. True testimonies to those who are acting locally for a more sustainable world.